call this uh, Village of Green Hills Council meeting to uh, order for January 23rd, 2024. Uh, clerk, call the roll. Here. Miss Hudson. Here. And Miss Walker. Here. Mayor Moore. Here. Okay, we have a prayer by Mary Walter. Dear Lord, let us all pray for peace in the world this new year and at this opening of the council in Green Hills, Ohio. Let us pray for people who stand for truth and that which is right. And give your blessings now and always to our veterans and their families. They have given so much for our freedoms. Let us pray for all the families who have lost a dear one during the holidays and for our wonderful volunteer fire department and police force. May they come back to us and their families whole. We shall also remember, dear Lord, those who have given the supreme sacrifice, for we pray that they will never be forgotten, for it is because of them that we are one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We ask you in the name of your Son, our brother Jesus, for this and for all our residents to enjoy the many blessings you will bestow upon us this year of 2024. Dear Lord, may the number one blessing in this agenda would be, let it be peace on earth and goodwill towards all men everywhere, and let it begin with each one of us here present. In the name of our brother Jesus, amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Well, we're waiting for someone to do the swearing in. And so the next thing would be uh, oath of office for our newly elected, re-elected council members, which is Jeff Holder, Rachel Hudson, and Maria Walter. And uh, we have someone that will be swearing in for, for me, um, and he should be here momentarily. Uh, could uh, we do anything, skip anything else? <laughs> uh, the, uh, technically, I need to, you need to be sworn in before we take any other action. Yeah, I, I other imagine. Action. Yeah. You should have brought cupcakes. Yeah. So, just take a moment. <laughs> Give some air time. <laughs> Hopefully, everybody. Uh, I will make a couple of comments. Hopefully, everybody had a good holiday season, and. Uh, you want to hold up what the major award looks like for a decoration. And uh, so uh, we have 290 of these that will be distributed wow. over the next couple weeks. And uh, I want to thank Jeff Halder for uh, designing every year he does this, the, uh, uh, the award. And this year he went above and beyond. And actually, because I'd had some surgery, he did the uh, judging for me this year. So, um, my wife and I helped. <laughs> we couldn't coordinate. Um, Even there's a lot. There was a lot of good lights and a lot of, um, a lot of good, well kept properties. So that yeah. made it easier. And then, of course, you were a little sick too to do it. Uh, also, um, we have um, a council member uh, vacancy. Jennifer Osmanoglu uh, resigned from council a uh, uh, week and a half ago, two weeks ago, and uh, council st start the procedure to uh, do a replacement for Jennifer. And do we have anything else? I was just going to say, um, be patient on the holiday awards. Uh, I, some of us will not walk in this weather. So, uh, and it's, it's a pretty long list. So, and it gets dark so early that it's usually a weekend endeavor. So be patient with us. I'll try and get and, mine out before spring. Okay. And we will be putting it on the uh, village's website so people can check their addresses. Can we do the uh, public presentation by Jennifer? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll do that. 
Yeah. We'll let you do the public presentation here for the library. Thank you so much for letting me come again. Of course, I'm Jenny from the Green Hills Library. And we have always have lots of fun things going on for minds of all kinds and people of all ages. But you all know summer reading for the kids, right? Well, the Winter Checkout Challenge is back, which is our incentive program for reading for the adults in the winter. So anybody who stops by one of our libraries and wants to sign up for our program, you can do it online or come and pick up one of our little sheets that have 16 activities on it. When you do that, this lovely tote bag can be yours. <laughs> it's bigger than the last ones and it has a new design and it's got some of the canvas instead of just the cotton, which makes it a little different in case you collect these things. But if you do sign up, anybody 18 or older can complete five activities off the list. It does not have to be in a straight line. That is not bingo, any five will do. Um, then you can stop by the branch and get a coffee mug. Mm -hmm. oh, Perfect for nice. all those winter warm beverages, soup, hot chocolate, coffee, quite large. Also a new design this year. And while supplies last, although we do have more than last year, so <laughs> completing it sooner, but you know, maybe you don't have to do it all in the same day unless you want to do it all in the same day. We can help. Also, um, we have anybody who's familiar with our Discovery Pass, which is free access to a number of local um, museums and resources. We have a new reservation system. It's much easier to use and it's all virtual now. The only trick on this is one of the ones you can visit the American Sign Museum, the Cincinnati Art Museum, special exhibits because of course the art museum is free. Uh, the Cincinnati Museum Center, great parks of Hamilton County, so Witten and all the other wonderful ones, the Harriet Beecher Stowe House and Pyramid Hill Sculpture Park and Museum. Each one has their own rules. You can visit our website for more information, but the only one that has to have something printed is the park. And you can visit any library and we can help you print that out. But you do have to have that the day that you want to go to that one. We are also offering um, tax preparation assistance the closest one would be at our North Central branch, but we have a number of locations that are offering that, including the downtown library, yeah. Grosbeck, Harrison, Madisonville, North Central, and Reading. So if anybody needs help, AARP and United Way are helping us with that. Each place has their own rules. So again, give us a call or stop by and we'll be happy to um, offer connections for that. You do need appointments, you can't just drop in. We also have a new printing system. I don't know if anyone's been in to see it yet, but it's much simpler than the way the old way worked. But the way free printing works is instead of a page amount, we have to do it by dollar increments. So every card has a $5 uh, credit that's loaded every day, which is the equivalent of 20 one-sided color copies. However you spread that out, if you want black and white, Anything over that $5 is 15 cents for black and white, 25 cents for color. And we also have two new emails in case you have things on your phone or something you want to send ahead so that it's there when you want to print. You can email to bw at chpl.org, which is the black and white one, or color at chpl.org. Those emails will generate a number and bounce it back to you that you can then use to log into the print system and get it at any of the locations that have the new one. They are rolling it out quickly, so it will be all of us very soon. Are those also on the website? Yes, okay. all of that is on the website, absolutely. And we have little sheets that the library that we can give you as well. Um, we do still have COVID tests. So if anybody, especially with the winter dragging along here, we have them available and four per household per day. And then we do have some programs that are coming up. We have Tai Chi, a demonstration um, with Jennifer Woods from Creative Aging for adults on Saturday, February 3rd at 2 p.m. We have um, Button Art for Kids on Monday, February 5th at 3 p.m. Hot Cocoa Creations for Teens, so they can customize their own additions to a traditional cocoa recipe on Tuesday, February 13th at 4 p.m. And we do have a, a drawing club flipbook activity for um, tweens and teens on February 28th at 4 p.m. That's a Wednesday, and we're celebrating Leap Day with Frog Crafts on the 29th at 4 p.m. 
One other quick question. Do you guys have the ability to scan? If someone wanted to scan a document, do you, mm -hmm. you have that ability? As we well? can scan to email. We can okay. set that to your create a PDF okay. and you can send it to your email or any other emails. We also offer free faxing. Both of those functions are 100% still available and still the same. It's only the printing and copying that has slightly different interfaces, but we still do. Mm -hmm. With the cup, you serve the coffee or the chocolate? We are going to have the ingredients so that they can okay. make their very own you will make set. Our so okay. it will have the powder and the you know whether you want cinnamon or you want peppermint oh, you want good. white chocolate oh I'll wonderful like a barista some, yes <laughs> okay customize right. okay. Yeah. well thank you so much for letting right. me thank you look thank forward you. to seeing everyone in 2024 thank you all right now we'll uh, do the oath of office for the new council members we have our Special swearer in her, <laughs> Senator Blessing. Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the United States of America, of America, the Constitution and laws, the Constitution and laws of the State of Ohio, of the State of Ohio, and the Charter and Ordinances, and the Charter and Ordinances of the Village of Green Hills, of the Village of Green Hills, and pledge to administer my duties, and pledge to administer my duties faithfully and impartially, faithfully and impartially. As a council member of the Council of the Village of Green Hills, as a council member of the Council of the Village of Green Hills, of Hamilton County, Ohio, of Hamilton County, Ohio, so help me God. So help me God. Congratulations, guys. Can we do a group Can we do a group picture? Group picture. I'm sorry. I think I was a party planner in a previous life. You get back in there. I was sworn in. Thank you. One, two, three. One, two, three. Thank you. Well, we have more people. I need to get one. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. I'll copy you on it as well. I was going to send if he wanted um, one for his uh, possibly for the website. Yes. So um, I figured I would send him to Yvonne and Jim. Thank you, Jeff Rachel Hudson. Ooh, why did Rachel keep there? Thank you. Well, while you're here, did you bring any good news from the state? We <laughs> talk property taxes on later days. He's like, I'll do that. Seeing as that's the football right now. Yeah. Trying to modify the exemption. So, capture this. Okay. Thank you. Right. Thank, you. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. 
And uh, Maria, did you say that is there somebody from the school board here? Yes. Yes. Okay. Good evening, Council, Mayor, Chief of Police, and Council Clerk, and Law Director. Uh, my name is Bill Spielman. Um, you probably met me over this past summer. I knocked on May just about all the doors in Green Hills. I ran for a Wynwood School Board and was successful in that. So I really just wanted to come tonight and introduce myself again as, as a member now of, uh, of uh, the, the Wynwood School Board. Um, I, at, the, at our organizational meeting, I was appointed as the municipal, municipal, man, municipal representative along with um, uh, the board president, uh, Deborah Bryant, um, for Green Hills. Uh, our biggest task over the next couple months is, is the um, finding and the hiring of a new school superintendent, as you all probably know. Uh, superintendent Smith resigned, not resigned, uh, retired at the end, of, towards the end of last year, and he'll be, uh, his last day is the end of July of this year. So we're in the process of, of uh, Announcing that there will be an upcoming meeting where the community can come in and um, just give us feedback about what they're looking for. Um, we're using the Ohio State School Board Association as a consultant in that search, and they're going to be conducting a community forum um, where we're going to just be open to members from the Springfield Township, um, Wyoming, and Forest Park communities to come in and, and talk about that. Um, so please take advantage of that. I'm sure everyone has opinions. Um, but I really just wanted to come and introduce myself. Hopefully um, there's a, a member from the council that, that's, um, coordinate, that I coordinate with. Um, so I, I really just wanted to thank you for your involvement. Thank you for your support. And um, sorry. Oh. <laughs> that's my fault. They said that they were coming for me. <laughs> Um, but but again, introduce myself and say thank you. Okay. Thank you. I have a thank question you. for you. Sure. Um, well, first, congratulations. Thank you. Um, you're welcome. Uh, but when is that meeting coming up? It's open um, to I'm not sure. I, I heard it was next Monday, okay. and I emailed the coordinator today to find out if it was so I could announce it tonight. Okay. Um, but I have not gotten a, a confirmed date, time, and location. Okay. Um, when you do, would you mind emailing us or posting it on like the village Facebook page or something? I will do that. Okay. Awesome. That, that was what I was going to do. Yeah. Okay. Um, yes. I'd like to go. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Now we'll sort of go back to um, our procedure here. Um, we have uh, election of President Pro Tem. Today. I would like to move from Maria Walter Willard to, uh, just walk it now. No. Um, Willard to be president pro tempore. I'd like to second it. Okay, you can second it. Uh, just call for a roll call vote. Okay, call for a vote. Um, Ms. Charles? Aye. Mr. Reed? Aye. Ms. Hudson? Aye. Mr. Coulter? Okay. Aye. All right. And I move that uh, Melanie Thomas would be Vice President for Town. I second it. Okay. Okay. Ready to go? Yep. Okay. okay. Ms. Walker? Aye. Ms. Hudson? Aye. Mr. Lee? Aye. And Mr. Coulter? Aye. Okay. All right. Congratulations. Thank you. And uh, until we. Uh, Replace Jennifer. Uh, I plan to stay with the same uh, way the committees are. And once we get a replacement, then I'll consider rotating some stuff. All right. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. May I ask you a question? A long time, for a long time, I was a liaison of the school uh, from the village of Green Hills, and then it changed to, I believe it was uh, Mr. Lee. Um, is that still in effect, or is that changing, or? Well, and I can't remember what could. It was. We have it it was. It, it was part of the intergovernmental right. affairs. Yeah, I think so. Tag so laws and rules intergovernment. You are the person. Yeah. Okay. Because then when it changed, I guess it was when I, they changed my committees, and therefore right. you yeah. took it over. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm it. 
<laughs> Unless I change the committees again. <laughs> All right, uh, moving on, we have the minutes of the previous council meeting of November 28th and December the 12th, 2023. If there are no corrections, the minutes shall stand as approved. No corrections. Okay. We have we've done our public presentations. We have no public hearings. Uh, reports of municipal officials, uh, municipal manager Yvonne Kobach. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I have just a few things I wanted to mention. I'm sure you've all noticed that our guardrail needs to be replaced. Again, yes, again. I think, I forget when we finally got it in. June or July, this is the fourth, fourth time, I believe, yeah. that's been taken out. Um, it's not one of our more expensive repairs, but um, at least it is doing what it's supposed to do. Um, and I do have our engineer working on some uh, additional measures that we can take. And that per so I'll keep you updated on that. Um, wanted to let you know it's in early February. Um, I'll be signing the contract for our next round of transit infrastructure funding. That's a real big one for us, um, like an eight hundred thousand dollar project for Farragut and Ingram. So we're excited about that. Next year we'll try to do um, payment, probably through a different source of funding, but. Uh, and then I wanted to let you know repairs still continue on the um, service garage. They're moving along. Um, it's a big building, so it seems slow, but they're actually moving along pretty good. Um, that's all I have right now. Okay. I had a couple of things. Number one, yes, it's doing what it's supposed to do. Otherwise, one of those cars would have entered in somebody's house. Yes. So it's, it's, pretty it's doing scary. what it has to do, what we need to beef it up somehow. Uh, and second, um, I know that comes pretty soon. The three seat in USA, I, I would like to. April. When, yeah, I know, but it, it starts before that. And last year we lost it all together. So I just wanted to put a reminder somehow that. Um, sure. I remember last year they had their deadline was like two months before the. Correct, the correct. And they were crazy. packed and no one uh, was absent. Right. And no, yeah, so yeah. they told me, please bring it up as soon as possible. Yep. Okay. We'll do. <coughs> okay. Moving on, all director Jeff Forbes. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Just a very quick sort of no report report. Uh, <laughs> the, the last thing that I probably mentioned was <clears throat> that the uh, adult use cannabis law had passed and, and had gone into effect and that a number of bills had been introduced that would potentially uh, modify that law as it was approved from the ballot. And I'm really just reporting tonight that none of those bills have actually um, made it all the way through. Um, the, although the, I mean, the state legislature took their holiday break, they are back. Um, I did see in the report that <clears throat> there were, I think there were virtually no committee meetings last week. And there may be some coming up this week, but we'll continue to watch it to see how that changes um, what the state law is and then you can make any decisions you may want to make about how you want to proceed. Okay. We should have. Oh, yeah, that's true. I should have asked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Clerk of Council, Teresa Lally. Nothing. Chief of Police, Jim Howard. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, for December, reference crime stats, we responded to 155 incidents during the month of December. Uh, we made 15 arrests, nine of them were warrants being served. Uh, a few cases we offered mutual aid to our surrounding neighborhoods for mutual aids. Uh, we responded to 28 squad runs, life squad runs. Uh, we issued 34 traffic citations with 40 warnings. We also investigated eight auto accident reports, so it was up a little bit for the month. Uh, for the year end, we actually took 132 criminal offense reports. Compared to 2022, we took 157. So the criminal offense was reported, so went down a little bit. Uh, the month was busy for us. We did December 1st down the gazebo with Santa, with cookies for the kids, for those that came out in the bad weather. Uh, that was a good time. And then we invited them back, came back, was up here on December 6th, and we had quite a few come up and visit then too. So uh, we appreciated Santa coming. Uh, during the month, on um, December 14th, every officer uh, in the department attended a, uh, Stop the bleed training, so that's more in-depth training about packing wounds, 
putting on tourniquets, chest seals, and so forth. Uh, so that's very good training. Uh, shout out to Springdale Police Department that provided the uh, certified instructors to do that training for us, so we appreciate it. And finally, we purchased lit vests, which I brought one here that you probably saw in the newsletter, but this was just purchased through a grant, through a safety grant uh, for each police officer. We also got them for all the service department members. Uh, it's just a concern to myself and everybody else on Winton Road and directing traffic and so forth. So you can see. Oh, wow. Yeah, wow. Uh, yeah, I like that. There's quite yeah. visibility. Oh, yeah. um, it stands out from all the uh, red lights and blue lights going on. So it really does. You can even, uh, you know, it's rechargeable. So it lasts for a long time. You can even dim it. If you turn the lights down in here, it'd light the room up, to be honest with you. So. <laughs> Can dim it if you want to, or totally turn it off. The other one, do? No, no, I don't think we can get those. Ones. I think it's it is. But yeah. as you can see, yeah, I mean it's it's, yeah, it's bright. So yeah. all wind road and traffic, directing traffic and stuff, uh, it's going to be seen a lot better. This was actually created from a. Uh, was developed from an officer from Wyoming Police Department oh. uh, after Dale Wood <coughs> on Torian Avenue was killed, mm -hmm. uh, directing traffic after an auto accident. Mm -hmm. So he created that, um, and now you'll see them all over the country. You can go to his website, and they're purchasing them all over the place. So that's up to him, and uh, we got them for, like I said, all the service departments out there in the middle of the street, too, a lot of times. So. And we did purchase one through the grant for a uh, school guard down at South Campus. Oh, it was very nice. dark down there in the morning, um, mm -hmm. so we provided that to her, too, so she had one. Good. Uh, that's end of report, unless you have any questions. The chief, yeah. um, we have been having a lot of accidents. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I mentioned at one time that sometimes I come really early here because trying to make a left turn into Winton I have to wait for three green arrows. That means no one is stopping on wind and on the red. Mm -hmm. um, we also had a, an accident not very long ago over the weekend, I guess it was Friday or Saturday, with a mail carrier. Um, I'm going to voice something that is, should probably not be voiced, but uh, I think we might be past the point of just writing warnings because uh, it will take the life of any one of our citizens. Just even the speed, even at the shopping center, when I was trying to go across to go to the dollar store, it was, you know, it was like the Nike swoosh. I mean, um, uh, people are not conscious of that. Um, I also have the, the, the run from uh, Springdale Road mm -hmm. coming that way uh, as a um, connection. Um, and that is also, bless you. And that is also a concern. Um, there are kids waiting for the buses there. Um, sometimes I have observed also that uh, a uh, private car not stopping on this on the signs of the bus saying to stop passing. and just passing around the bus. Um, it's 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 going to be a sooner or later a mishap that I would like by all means to be able to avoid, and That's perhaps um, I I my experience is if it doesn't cost you something out of your pocket, people would not pay attention just to a warning. And I think we have gotten to that point. Um, and you, that's your business. That's your, uh, that's what you're here for. But that's just voicing my opinion. Well taken. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Yes, and uh, we have bad drivers everywhere now. I think everywhere. since COVID, seems like. Oh, we blame everything on COVID. Well, yeah. Still, it, it, it's gotten out of control. Yes. Yep. Yes. Yeah, I agree. Uh, okay, yeah, moving on, uh, my report, I uh, have uh, court receipts, uh, the month of December, uh, the Indian bank balance is $21,770.36, checks to be issued to the state of Ohio, $412.50, Hamilton County, $13.50, Village of Green Hill is $1,322. And... Uh, and I just want to thank again Jeff Halter for doing the holiday award viewing and uh, 
can uh, be looking forward over the next month or two of getting your certificate. Thank you. And uh, sunshine, a, a, a sunshiny day. Nice above day. 32. Right. You can post it in the <laughs> springtime for all your neighbors to see. <clears throat> Keep up the good work of lighting the town up. All right. Reports of committees, community de development. Jeff Holder. Uh, no report at this time, but we'll be establishing a schedule for the year uh, when we're going to have our meetings. And okay. Keep posted. Okay. Sounds good. <laughs> Safety, Melanie Hermes. Uh, no report at this time, but I did want to mention that at our next work session on February 13th, I did want to have an um, in-depth conversation about the fire department and fire services. So I wanted Six to... No, oh. it's the full, full council. Oh, I wanted to have a conversation about okay. the fire department. Just, I know... During the work session. During the work session. During the work session. Yes. Okay. And then after that, we'll create a schedule for okay. when we'll meet. Right. <clears throat> Recreation Cable TV, Rachel Hudson. Yes, so I have a couple of things. Let me bring up this email from Dana, and I'm just going to read everything. So, uh, Waycross needs lots of new volunteers, perfect for students, junior high and up, and also for retirees. No experience needed. Right now it's basketball season at the end of February. They'll have a lot of student concerts to cover through March. Um, and then their summer film workshop for teens is back. There's eight sessions in June over two weeks for grades seven through 12. Um, they're bringing back Glenn Hartong to be their instructor, Emmy Award winning producer, inquirer, photojournalist, and more. The dates are June 3rd through June 13th. Registration fees and details on the Waycross Facebook page. And then she also wanted to share that if residents, businesses, or organizations would like to sponsor a Green Hill student's cost for the camp, they can reach out to Dana. Last year, sponsorships allowed several local students the chance to be part of the camp who would otherwise not have been able to attend. Questions about summer film workshop or volunteering, call 513-825-2429. And then I did want to add, um, since I have this lovely flyer here, that um, the email is info at waycross.org um, and the camp is going to be the Monday through Thursday, June 3rd through June 13th, 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. And then they'll have a premiere party July 12th at 6 p.m. And the registration fee is $200 per student. But again, if somebody wanted to um, go and didn't have those funds, they might still want to reach out because it looks like they will have hopefully again some sponsorship opportunities. And then I did want to um, reference the, I don't know that it's necessarily considered recreation, but I'm going to throw it in there. Um, the new business, the lounge, which a lot of people have gone to social media to talk about. So I went down there incognito just to try it out and see how the atmosphere was. And I know that they're open pretty late, um, but after hours are more for adults only. And throughout the month of January, if you are Green Hills resident and you go down there with your ID, you'll get a free meal and a free non-alcoholic beverage and their food is delicious. Yeah. So, and I want to say too that um, I know some people have had some concerns about what kind of people they'll be bringing to the village and some of that can't be helped, but they seem to be really great owners. They, I found out when I went there, one of the owners was actually cooking, which I love, is an owner that's not afraid to get their hands dirty. So they are witnessing knowing what's going on. And also they've been renting that place since before COVID happened. Mm -hmm. And so they've been paying rent on it. And they also, because we've all said our things about the shopping plaza and unfortunately we can't, we don't have control over who the landlord is. But so not only have they paid for rent even when they were not operating, but they paid for all the repairs there. So I think that that's the kind of tenant that we really want and we really want to support to come in. And then there's also a new um, video and gaming shop too, which I've not been able to check out yet, but that too, so. Okay. Rachel, I was there on Saturday and it was absolutely delicious. So good. Yes. Reminds me of my grandma's cooking. Yeah. Her. God rest her soul, so yeah. no complaints. You were there me. Friday. Oh, was it Friday? Or Friday. It Friday? Yeah, Friday. Okay. Because I was there Friday. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, the food is good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, service and streets. Uh, do you want to? No, I have, I have nothing to report okay. on that. Intergovernmental affairs, laws and rules, Maria Walter. We haven't met, and uh, depending on the next uh, schedule that we have. 
Finance. So their safety and their long term goals together, yeah. Finance and audit to Jack. Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, January and February are financial reporting months uh, where we need to close close out 2023 and complete all the financial reporting to the auditor <coughs> of the state. Uh, the auditor of the state highly suggests that the December books remain open until this process is done and the last and final county certificate uh, goes to Hamilton County. So the, the December books are balanced uh, and they're sitting for now in case any changes need to occur. Uh, at your place tonight, you'll, you'll have uh, the November uh, month, monthly recap. Uh, as it came, came out, we had a short month in December, so it, was, uh, it, it came shortly after we had, had our De December meeting in early December. Um, as you can see, the numbers continue to be uh, in a positive direction. Um, it, it also, there's a key note there that we did get a reimbursement of uh, $201,000 uh, for the uh, SORTA uh, project. So that kind of shows a, a big bump uh, in, in the general fund revenues. Uh, section for the month of November. That's a pass through, so you know it, it, it doesn't really stay stay with us. The general fund, uh, as of the end of November, is two million four hundred and fifteen thousand three hundred and twenty one dollars and ninety five cents. Um, there were no transfers noted in in November, uh, so uh, uh, nothing to report in in that that regard. Other than our, you know, our expenses uh, as as of uh, the end of November, we were we spent less than we did in 2022. So uh, that that is a good thing. Any questions? I, I don't know when would be the best time to bring this up, um, but a, a comment just as we look at um, real estate taxes, there's not a, a huge change between 2020. 2022 and 2023, but I imagine there's going to be a significant change uh, next year because mm -hmm. yeah. no, it won't change. Or? We, it will only change on uh, three mills of property taxes, okay. and it will only reflect higher rates as houses sale sell and the new homeowner comes in. But for all of our voted levies, they're all they capped. Okay. Yeah, they yeah. they got it. So, okay. All, so, okay. All, all the all the village property taxes, as well as the school, is a, is a set is dollar a amount. Okay. Okay. And, and so so yeah. that that mm -hmm. aspect of that, you know, and that's that's roughly about well, about seventy five percent when you look at the school and and sure. and the village. Yeah. About it's it, it's about seventy five percent of anybody's property tax. You know, the zoo, Got the it. mental yeah. health, mm -hmm. the children's services. Those all fluctuate sure. based upon values. Yeah, because I find it interesting. It seems like um, there would be a cap. I understand it's not affecting us as much, uh, but uh, when prices go as high as they're, they're, they're going and people see, it, in certain cases, an outrageous jump, it seems like that should have a cap on it, it or something. But yeah, and you know, and there will be pain in that adjustment I mean that's I'm not trying to short short stop that but uh, and you know hopefully the state Addresses fathers and, and mothers up up in Columbus figure something out that, that can help Good. people who, who are in need so thank you uh, if um, a new levy is passed though it'll be based upon the current evaluations of the property all right, moving on. It's an opportunity for residents. Uh, well, actually, Look, we don't, we don't have any. <laughs> so nobody can talk because we're not we don't have any business to pass. So uh, uh, we'll save uh, com uh, comments here towards the end. I, mean, I don't know if we have any council members want to say anything. I, I wanted to bring something up. Maria uh, talked to Mary Ann and me about it. Uh, 
and was wanting to, uh, to consider uh, council ID badges other than the, the normal thing that we get from Ann, which could be put in a lariat or a, in a cellophane kind of badge thing. Uh, but Mary Ann's looked into it, yeah. and uh, I don't know, it's, uh, uh, they want minimum orders, and, um, and because it's a small order, it's not cheap. Um, so I didn't know if, uh, if council wanted us to, and I don't know if you want to discuss what is, it. Any, what is the price for uh, per item? Well, um, it, part of it is the setup. And I think uh, the one that, she, that I talked to her about earlier today uh, it was a rough estimate of around $250. Mm -hmm. And uh, you ended up getting buying 20. And I don't know how much extra it was for the 20 badges. And of course, we only have six people, seven people did one for the mayor. But I, you know, I hardly ever use my bag or you know, show my ID. basically. Yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, I, I guess some towns do it, uh, but um, but I don't know if council wants to pursue that or not. Uh, Maria had a, a sample which she showed. I yeah, don't know if you brought that or not. Yeah. Um, and there's with um, some uh, the concern sometimes were the pins to perforate the material, but this one was magnet. It was a very powerful magnet to put inside and then put the badge outside. I I don't feel the need for one, but that's yeah. I don't either. Well, or maybe okay. if you want to go ahead and get one for your own use, that would be fine. Okay. But, yeah. Okay. Anybody else have? I, 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 I just wanted to say that I wanted to thank uh, Jennifer Osmoglu for, for her, her service. Um, I had the pleasure of working with her on both on the finance committee and, and um, uh, on streets and services. And she, uh, she really took those jobs seriously. She worked, she worked hard at it. Um, I uh, certainly understand her her uh, uh, immediate concerns to, for the reason for her resignation, uh, and um, I wish her well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. she was yeah. a good yeah. asset. Yeah. Yeah. She will, will be missed. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Um, municipal calendar. Anything uh, other? Uh, yeah, just the work session in February thirteenth. February thirteenth. Okay. All right, moving on now. Opportunity for residents and non-residents to appear before council. Non-residents must obtain prior permission. This is time for citizens to comment on, on matters before council. When recognized, please come forward to the podium. Complete the sign-in sheet, verbally indicate if you're a resident of Green Hills, a non-resident or a non-resident, state your comments. If you have questions, questions will be recorded and referred to the manager's office for response. <clears throat> this will allow time for thoughtful and thorough consideration to be given to each question. Council meetings are recorded for ease of transcriptions. Comments are limited to four minutes. Speakers may not yield any or all of their time to other speakers. Monique Mason Halter, Green Hills resident. Over the past few months, I have given you reports about widespread opposition to HR 3557, the American Broadband Deployment Act, and other federal bills that eliminate municipal control over cell tower and wireless deployment. Opposition to HR 3557 includes the U.S. Conference of Mayors, National League of Cities, and National League of Counties. If these bills are passed, it could significantly affect the village's income historical status, property values, safety, and security. It is still unclear to me how many of you have contacted our lawmakers about these bills. Last month, I read aloud from and provided you with copies 
of a report entitled Undermining Local Resilience Will Jeopardize National Security. The report was written by lawyer Julian Gresser. Tonight, I'm going to summarize information published in a report called Telecom Fires and Federal Wireless Bills. It is posted on the National Call for Safe Technology website. Fires are another reason our village would want to keep cell towers from being installed throughout our residential neighborhoods, especially if there is no cell service gap. Cell towers and their related telecommunications equipment can cause devastating fires that cannot be extinguished except for around the perimeter until the utility cuts the power, which can take up to 60 minutes. Anyone putting water on a cell tower fire before the electricity is cut risks being electrocuted. HR 3557 and other telecom bills are written to override the 1996 Telecommunications Act, a volume of amendments to the Constitution, the National Historic Preservation Act, and the National Environmental Policy Act. They jeopardize authority at the local level where local issues are best known. If the carriers want less stringent fire and building codes, they merely lobby the FCC commissioners to change the rules when it comes to fire safety. Legislators supporting these bills are overlooking that cell towers should not be placed near homes, daycare centers, or schools because people need time to escape if there is a fire. The Telecom Fires and fire Federal Wireless Bills Report provides details about several telecom equipment related fires. One at a California school and one at a church in Massachusetts. It also lists other examples of telecom equipment initiated fires. Four major fires in Southern California collectively killed five people, injured dozens of others, including firefighters, and led to over $6 billion in damages. The 2007 Malibu Canyon fire started when utility poles overloaded with telecom equipment snapped in the wind. The 2018 Woolsey fire burned nearly 100,000 acres of land, caused three fatalities, prompted the evacuation of more than 295,000 people and caused over six billion in damage. The safety and enforcement division found that the electric utility provider had conducted a telecom inspection months, six months earlier and found a broken utility telecom messenger wire and a broken lashing wire. The utility did not assign an urgent level to the repair and months later, the broken equi equipment was energized during the Wolseley fire. Last but not least, I'm asking again that council members take action to strengthen our own small cell wireless ordinance so it's as strong and as protective as ones passed by other Ohio municipalities. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? All right. Hearing none, uh, we want to, somebody want to call for an executive session? to discuss how do we phrase it? Um, compensation of public, public employees. employees. Yeah. I make a motion that we go to an executive session to discuss compensation of public employees. Second. And there'll be no oh. action taken Correct. afterwards. Right. Second. Clerk, call the council. Mr. Holder? Aye. Mr. Lee? Aye. Mr. Lee? Aye. Ms. Hudson? Aye. Ms. Walker? Aye. Good. Be in executive session.